awesome God. You are the reason we are here this morning to praise, to worship, and to adore you. The years that we have lived, you took us through the very first Sunday of each month of the years that we have lived. You took us through the first Sunday of January, took us through the first Sunday of February. Here we are witnessing the first Sunday in the month of March. And because you have done it in previous years, we believe that you will see us through all the first Sundays of this year and beyond. We are here as a church family just to appreciate you. That what you have done, we cannot tell it all. Even when we try, we still cannot tell it all. But that which we have brought before you this day, please accept it and inhabit our praises. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Say a better amen. Look at your neighbor and say to him or her, Happy First Sunday, Happy First Sunday, Happy First Sunday. Thank you, Lord. You may please be seated. I welcome each and every one of us to church this Sunday. And I pray that God will continue to keep us, help us, and see us through in Jesus' name. I'll be taking uh, my Bible reading from Isaiah 25. I'll be reading verse 1. Isaiah 25, verse 1. O oh Lord, thou art my God, I will exalt thee, I will praise thy name, for thou hast done wonderful things, thy counsel of old are faithfulness and truth. The title of this morning's message is, The God of Wonders. The God of wonders. Brethren, until we see God as the God of wonders, our myopic mind tends to end what God is still working on. God is not a one-way traffic. He has so many ways of doing whatsoever he wants to do for you. Therefore, don't cage God into a tight corner in your mind by thinking that you know how God is going to settle you because you don't. We are talking about the God of wonders. Experience had shown that when we think that all is over, the God of wonders shows up and shows up with something different from our thoughts and our imaginations. Brethren, throughout the scripture, we have seen many wonders of God as experienced by those who contacted God. The wonderful acts of God and the miraculous deeds of God are unquantifiable. May God of wonder show up in your situation in the name of Jesus. I, I don't like your amen. I say may the God of wonders show up in your life in the name of Jesus. You see, to us human beings, God's act seems wonderful. But to God, it's not. That is the way he does his things. Making the impossible possible. Overruling the reports of the doctors. Making his will done in your life. Making ways where there seems to be no way. Causing water to flow from dry rocks. Bringing back dead bodies to life. Making a barren a mother of children. 
this God of wonders can turn the valley of dead dry bones into a valley filled with a mighty army. May that God visit you in the name of Jesus. Hence, this God deserves our praises. This God deserves our worship. This God deserves our thanksgiving. He deserves our dancing and our rejoicing, even in his presence. And if you don't know how to dance, just jump. Just jump. It's part of dancing in some culture. Shout hallelujah, somebody. The God of wonders. The verse we just read says, Oh Lord, thou art my God. I will exalt thee. I will praise thy name. How? Why? For, thy has, for thou hast done wonderful things. And the wonders of God are just unquantifiable. It says, thy counsel of old are faithfulness and truth. Do you know, church of God, Pharaoh thought that God made a mistake when he led his children towards the Red Sea. It was, it was an error because they got to a dead, dead end. Hence, he pursued after them. But you know, church, it was a matter of time. Pharaoh realized how wrong he was. Pharaoh realized how wrong he was. But at the time he discovered how wrong it wa he was, it was too late for him to change his mind. I pray that the enemies will not be able to change their mind if you don't repent, if they continue to do what they are doing to stop you in the name of Jesus. The enemies of righteousness, the enemies of true justice may be having an upper hand right now in your life. They think because of their position and their post, they can stop you from reaching your goal. But listen to me, church. The God of wonders is still on his throne. I said the God of wonders is still on his throne. They cannot stop your praise. They cannot stop your worship. They cannot stop your thanksgiving. Like the king of Egypt, Pharaoh and his host, they will drown in the Red Sea of life in the name of Jesus, except they repent. We are talking about the God of wonders. There is nothing this God cannot turn around. I say there is nothing this God cannot turn around and he will show up in your life and turn around everything that have turned your life around for evil in the name of Jesus. We are talking about the God of wonders that can pick a worthless person, that can pick a hopeless situation and bring worth and value to such situation. That is the God I'm talking about. It is not over until God says it is over. No wonder. After Moses and the children of Israel experienced the God of wonders. At the Red Sea, they saw the God of wonders. Because they themselves thought they had come to a dead end. They couldn't go forward. They couldn't move backward because Pharaoh was pursuing. Left and right, they were mountains. But they never knew that there's a God who can make a way where there seems to be no way. No wonder in Exodus 15, verse 11 and verse 19. Exodus 15, verse 11 and 19. They said, who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like unto thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praise, doing wonders? For the house of Pharaoh went in with his chariots and with his horsemen into the sea. And the Lord brought again the waters of the sea upon them. But the children of Israel went on dry ground in the midst of the sea. That will be your testimony in the name of Jesus. Because in doing wonders, there is no God like your God. In doing signs and wonders, there is no God like your God. In holiness, in righteousness, in truth, in authority, in ultimate power. There is no God like our God. Put those hands together for this great God. That is why we are here, church, to thank God. This first Sunday, we are here to thank him, praise him, worship him, dance before him. And I believe the choir and the band are ready to lead us into his presence through worship.
Magnify the Lord with me. Exalt the name of Jesus. Magnify the Lord with me. Exalt the name. Halle, hallelujah. Look at your neighbor left and right. Tell him, ask him. Magnify the Lord with me. Exalt the name of Jesus. Ha! Magnify the Lord with me. Exalt the name of Hallelujah. Magnify the Lord with me. Exalt the name of Jesus. Magnify the Lord with me. Exalt the name of Jesus. Magnify the Lord with me. Exalt the name of Jesus. Magnify the Lord with me. Exalt the name of Jesus. Ah. Magnify the Lord with me. Exalt the name of Hallelujah. One more time you say, magnify the Lord with me, exalt the name of Jesus. Ah. In the eulogizing God, the psalmist said, he acknowledged that God was his God. No matter the situation you are going through, it doesn't matter what is happening right now. The acknowledgement of this God of wonders is the very key to your progress. Because the enemy is always in the business of discrediting God. But don't allow him to discredit the God of wonders even in your life. Look at your neighbor and say, don't, don't permit the devil to discredit your God. Because God is still in the business of working signs and wonders in the lives of those who trust in him. By the way, what is a wonder? <laughs> a wonder is what causes people to wonder about what God is doing in your life. That's what causes people to wonder. No wonder the psalmist said in Psalm 90 and 71, verse 8, uh, 7 and 9, Psalm 71, 8 and 9 says, I am a wonder. Look at your neighbor and say, yeah, you may be sitting beside me, but I am a wonder. That's what the psalmist said. He says, I am a wonder unto many, but thou art my strong refuge. Let my mouth be filled with thy praise and with thy honor all the day long. I'm a wonder. That people are not ra running away from you. People are seated by your side. You are a wonder. Otherwise, they could have relocated. And I pray for you. That ap when, after God has done with you. After God has finished what is cooking for you, you will also say, you are a wonder to many. Shout hallelujah. And that's why in, in, in Psalm 107, verses 8, verses 15, verses 21, verse 31, he's saying there, he says, oh, that man would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. It is the wonderful acts of God that kept you and I alive and well, regardless of all the challenges we are faced with. Praise the Lord, somebody. I say, praise the Lord, somebody. God has the ability to make the hopeless hopeful again. God has the ability to make the sick healed and live in perfect health again. He can cause the stone that the builders have rejected. Uh, I say he can cause the stone that the builders have rejected to become the head of the corner. Uh, what a mighty God we serve. Can somebody shout hallelujah? hallelujah. King Nebuchadnezzar sentenced Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego into the fire. 
Hallelujah. Because they refused to bow before their God. There are people who are bowing down to gods because of money. There are people doing silly and stupid things just because of money. There are people overturning a lot of things just because of money. These guys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they stood before the king and said, we serve a God of wonders. We will not bow. We will not bend before your God. And Nebuchadnezzar said, I sentence you to a fire that burns with fire and brimstone as it were. But they said, listen, let your fire be heated ten times. We will not bow. We will not bend. How, how, how I wish we have men and women of integrity that we know that they are serving the God of wonders that can overturn the decree of the king. I mean, Nebuchadnezzar threw them to the fire of a truth. But the God of wonders showed up. I said the God of wonders showed up in the midst of that fire. I'm talking about the God of wonders. He will show up in your life regardless of the fires that you are going through. Yeah, I say he will show up in your life regardless of what the enemy had plotted and planned to do because we serve a God of wonders. Shout hallelujah. Who is like you? You are the king of kings. Who is like you? You are the greatest one. We bow before you and praise your holy name. I chant Hosanna. With and say, I chant. The God of wonders. Deuteronomy 7 verse 9. Deuteronomy 7 verse 9 says, Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenants and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandment too. A thousand generation. There is something no one can take away from God. His faithfulness. And his truthfulness. God is truthful. God is faithful. It is the truthfulness and the faithfulness of God. That propels him to work wonders. So let all men be liars but God will remain true. And he's going to remain true for you. Because he's a faithful God. The very nature of God will not permit him to fail you. God will not fail you. I've already told us times to that number. God may decide to lose a battle in order to win a war. That is God for you. When you think God should move, he will not move. When you say he shouldn't move, that's when he's going to move. And he's moving on your behalf. Look at your neighbor and say, don't give up. God is moving on your behalf. We're talking about the God of wonders. He's not unrighteous to forget. It does not matter what you're going through. You are going to testify because of God's faithfulness. The God of wonders. Isaiah 9 verse 6 Isaiah 9 verse 6 says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called what? Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. I said that God is bringing peace back to your home. That God is bringing peace unto your marriage. He's bringing peace into your health in the name of Jesus. Jesus is a wonder working God because his name is called Wonderful. Shout hallelujah somebody. We have a God in Christ that is touched by the feelings of our infirmity. He's thinking about you and his thoughts towards you are of peace and not of evil. 
That's why we are here this first Sunday of March 2023. We are here because of his righteousness. Brethren, it is not because of what you and I are doing or have done. It's just because of his mercy that we are not consumed. It is because of his faithfulness. It is because of his righteousness. That's why we are not consumed. It is not to him that will it, brother. It is not to him that runneth, but to God who showeth mercy. Shout hallelujah, somebody. You may not have received answers to your prayers, but let me tell you, the answer is on the way. I want to tell you that I don't like that amen. I say the answer is on the way. The reason, because the Bible says that to him that is joined to the living, there is hope. There is hope for you. That you are alive today, there is hope for you. That everything is going to be all right. I said there is hope for you that everything is going to be all right. I said there is going to be hope for you. I said there is going to be hope for you. Because you will testify. I said you will testify of his goodness. Of his mercy. Shout hallelujah. Shake that brother. Shake that sister and say it's going to be all right. 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 I love you, Lord. For your mercies never fail me. No, my days have been held in your hand. From the moment that I wake up, until I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. With your hand and sing, all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath. goodness of God. Hear me. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire ha. in darkness night. You have closed like no other. Hey! I've known you like a father. I've known you as a friend. And I will lead in the goodness of God. Wait and say, in all my life you have been faithful. Oh, in all my life you have been so
I love your voice You have led me through the fire In darkness night You are close like no other From experience Say I love you Lord Just the keyboard I love you Lord Let him hear your voice For your mercy never fails me All my days I've been held in your love From the moment that I wake up Oh yes Lord Oh yes. I will see of the Say I love you, Lord. Say I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. You have led me. You have led me to the fire. Oh. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father, oh, I've known you as a friend, and I have lived in the goodness. Lift up both hands, everybody now say, in all my life you have been faithful. I will sing, I will sing, I will sing, I will sing, Shall we all rise? By the grace of God in this church, we are not taking things for granted. It is not a right for you to sleep and wake up. It's not a right. It's not a right that you are alive today. It's not a right. Because of the goodness of the Lord. Not everybody that sleeps wakes up. But he has woken you up. And he says, listen, to him that is joined. That means somebody joined you to the living. To him, Ecclesiastes 9 verse 4. So to him that is joined to the living, there is life. There is hope. For a living dog is better than a dead lion. So we are in the church today. To praise and to worship this God. So I want you to just lift up both hands. Oh Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider.
we are here as a church family to thank God for the blessing of life. We're here as a church family to thank God for journey mercies. We are here to thank God for feeding us physically and spiritually. As a church, we are here to thank God for sunshine, for rainfall, for summer, for winter that he has allowed us to go through. We are here as a church to thank God for shelter over our heads. He did not allow us to be homeless. We are here to thank God for the wonders upon our spouses and upon our children. Let's give him praise. Let's just give him praise for his covenant of grace and mercy upon our entire household. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Stretch your hands towards the altar as you take this song, just the keyboard. I'm alive today because God kept me. Sing it out. will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? With what will a man give us an exchange? We are living in a time and age when people they just lost count of eternity. Everything is not about this world. Everything is about eternity. What's the benefit of you coming to church and dancing and rejoicing when you are not actually planning to make it to heaven? The Bible says you have all men the most miserable. We shouldn't do things as the world and the worldly people do things. They don't have God in their thinking. They are acting God. They are doing things as though they have their breath. But we are Christians. We should do things as Christians. We should think as Christians. We should behave as Christians. 
Jesus Christ said, anyone that is not gathering with me is against me. Let us do things righteously and faithfully. And let us commit ourselves to God. You cannot be in this church, Heaven's Glorious Embassy, and you don't have heaven in mind. I begin to wonder, what are you doing here? We're here to worship God. We're here to adore and magnify Him and hear the undiluted word of God so that when He comes, we will not be found wanting. Paul said, I put my body under subjection lest I preach others to heaven and I a castaway. Heaven is the goal, brother. And that's, that's what we come to church for. This is not a social gathering. This is not, this is not an association. It's a church, the body of Christ. We should be heavily, uh, heavily minded. It should be everything about heaven. If I offend you, tell me. If I offend you, I will tell you. Let's think as brethren. <laughs> we may project into the future. But the way things are going, we don't know how close the trumpet is to the mouth of the angel. That's why we should live our lives. This is not the final, this is not the final place. We are journey, we are journeying through life. This, we are like pilgrims going through this life. So let's always have that at the back of our minds and let us live as brethren. Okay? If you're in the church, you know you're not born again. You cannot say, I'm your pastor, and you're not born again. You're, you're hurting me. No, you cannot say, I'm your pastor. And you are living a life different from the life that the pastor is living. You are hurting, you are hurting somebody. You can't say I'm your, I'm your pastor. And you hear how I, I treat my wife. And you are not treating your wife more than that. You have to do better than your father. You have heard how my wife treats me. As a... Hallelujah. You should treat your husband like that. She carries me as egg. Carry a husband like that. Please, elders, permit me. I'm not an elder yet. Permit me. There's a saying that the frog says, husbands are very scarce. He carries her own husband and back. It's a proverb. So let us appreciate ourselves. That is the point I'm making. This is not the time to quarrel. This is the time to love God and serve God. Am I communicating? The God of wonders is not done with you yet. Don't close the chapter. He's still working on you. That doctor's report, hmm, he's working on it. And he's going to bring all your numbers that are out of range. He's going to bring them inside the range. Because everything about you is numbers. Heart rate numbers, heartbeat numbers, cholesterol level numbers, blood cloth, whatsoever numbers, your thyroid numbers. Everything is about numbers. When it goes out of range, that is when problem starts. But there's a God of wonders. He's going to knock everything back in range. I don't like your amen. So that every time you visit the, the medical doctors or the office of the doctor, they will look at your numbers and will say, hey, well done. And that result is going to come in and you will be happy again so that you will prove to the people around you that you serve a God of wonders. Say better amen. amen. So having said all I have said, if you are not born again, I'm coming for you. You have to be born again by fire, by force. Honestly, I've gotten to the point now because I just waited for the fasting to finish. I've gotten to the point now is by fire, by force. I'm coming for you. I tell you, I will drag, we, will, we will drag ourselves and we'll end up in heaven. So don't say anybody have reported me. The Holy Spirit have told me a lot of things that I will come for you. Look at your neighbor and say, ah, the pastor is coming for you. <laughs> we can't have a large church like this and in heaven we are lacking one person. Those online, they are in their hundreds. I'm on site and online pastor. 
we will make it to heaven. Yeah. And there's, there's somebody, my Koboko is coming for you. <laughs> I'm just taking time. You know, you know yourself, you know. I'm not looking towards you, not you, not, I'm not. I love you, Lord. <laughs> you amazing me. Amen and amen. 